Hello everyone, how you guys doing? It's a girl with the Funky High Vibes, and welcome to your 2020 reading forecast. <laughs> um, if you guys saw my last Beer Sunday, thank you so much for watching. And already there was such a big energy about us stepping into 2020. I feel like a lot of us collectively are very excited. We are just ready to get the ball rolling and get the new year going. But really the message we got for that video is that this time, right, this gestation period, this, of course, we can't control time, right? <laughs> a day is still 24 hours, even though it feels sometimes like it's very quick. <laughs> but there is still, you know, this a certain amount of days until we get to the new year. And we can't really rush it, right? There is a certain amount of days, 24 hours in a day, there's a certain amount of hours, certain amount of minutes even. So we are very eager to get there, but this time is not really to delay, but right now it is a time of planning. It is a time, because again, we got the Knight of Wands and it's all about moving forward and getting excited for the new year and feeling excited for the new year because it feels like we have a lot of ideas that we want to start forward. Not even just new year's resolutions, but you know, of losing weight and doing, and doing all that good stuff that we always talk about, but then two weeks later, we're, we forget about it. <laughs> but it's just projects, you know, business ventures, um, maybe romance ventures, or anything that, all these new projects that you want to start, we're kind of waiting for that. But this time, you know, this waiting time is really, again, about planning and about create getting these big ideas and distilling them into everyday achievable goals. We all have big dreams and they're awesome. Don't ever diminish your dreams, but we do need to break that big dream down into smaller achievable goals. And that's what we're going to talk about. Well, we, that's what we talked about in the video. But in this video, what I want to do is actually pull um, 12 cards, one for each month, and then I'm going to use this other deck for um, for each quarter because this is the yogic path. I mean, it's a really beautiful deck, but it talks about big, again, big ideas. So I figured that would be a great one for us to break down. And this round one, which is super cool, <laughs> is the archetypes, the archetypes uh, oracle. And I feel like it's a great one for for the monthly. You know, what kind of archetype we need to adopt for each month kind of thing so let's um let's go for it let's see first what january has in store okay this one already the vow very interesting because again we are excited right and what it feels like is that we are vowing to ourselves to we're committing we're committing to the big plan. We're committing to the big idea, which is actually awesome. And I'm very excited about this. All right. So, um, so let's go for February now. All right. As one flies out. <laughs> uh, very cool. So we actually got the card of the animal. Uh, for February, to me, what the animal talks about is going back to basics, going back to instinct. And intuition right um, animals as beautiful as they are and as awesome as they are and if you've ever worked with animal medicine you know animal meditations and healings it's a beautiful energy to work with but they move solely by instinct right we as human beings we have communication they do as well but we have words right we have a more sophisticated way to communicate we have sophisticated thoughts and we have writing. We have all these, again, big ideas that animals don't. And again, I'm not saying that you need to give up your big dream. Keep it. Always keep it with you. But what the animal, what the animal energy is saying here is that it need, we need to go back to basics. Pretty much what I touched earlier, and it's actually just reaffirming what I said, is that taking that big dream, right, that we are vowing to to achieve and 
distilling it down into smaller parts. March. Let's go from March. Oh yeah, guys, this is going to be a bit of a longer video. <laughs> so grab a cup of tea, sit down and relax. Very cool. Okay. March, we got the destroyer. <laughs> this I'm sure will scare some people just because of the name, right? The destroyer. Again, it kind of instills the idea of like, do I need to destroy my dreams? But really, um, I love, if you guys can see, there are two eyes in the middle here. And they're kind of hidden in darkness, right? So when we go for our dreams, when we go for that light at the end of the tunnel, right? This feels like kind of like a tunnel thing. And that's where we're going into to achieve our dreams. And this light is kind of the end of the, the, end of the tunnel. These eyes feel very much like fear. They feel like doubt. They feel like questioning. And it's okay to question. It's okay to doubt, right? We, a feat that um, humans have is the ability to hold opposing thoughts at the same time. <laughs> so we want to go for that dream, right? We want to achieve the big goal. And yet we are afraid of it. So the destroyer is actually not talking about destroying your dreams. This fear is not coming to destroy your dreams if you let it. But the destroyer is us. We need to adopt this archetype to destroy the fears, to destroy the doubts. And to destroy that inner voice that tells us no. And for April, we have the flame. So it feels like we're, we're creating the story now of the vow, right? We've got the vow. We've, we've made the commitment. We've gotten the animal, which is we're going forward, right? We're charging. Also, another thing I'm getting about the animal is that as a predator, right? They hunt the prey. We are the hunter hunting our dreams, right? We're, we're the hunter kind of with the with a very laser focused eye on the goal. The destroyer is we're going to get afraid. We're going to feel a little bit of fear. We're going to feel a little bit of doubt because we're actually going to start seeing things working. We're going to start seeing things moving. We're going to start seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and fear creeps in because we're like, wait, things are working. What if I'm not good enough? But they are working. So you are good enough. The flame in April feels very much like a new sense of awakening and a new sense of self-confidence because we've destroyed, we've burned away at the doubt and the fear. And the flame to me feels like that new moment of hope. You know, it's kind of like the rekindling of the flame the vow in the beginning may have dimmed a little bit, but now the flame comes back. And look at that flame. That flame I have is pretty much dancing around all the time. <laughs> That's why I keep looking at it. <laughs> so I'm like, is it going to burn my, my house down? But of course, it's not that big. But it's just really dancing. So it's beautiful. So for May, we have the mystic. The mystic now is... Um, I love these eyeballs here, right? So... What I'm getting out of this butterfly, is it a butterfly or um, it's a moth? I'm not sure. <laughs> but well, actually moth to a flame, right? The moth to a flame. So with these eyeballs here, it's again that focus on the dream, right? The focus on that new idea that we're so excited about. But the mystic here is telling me that we're also looking, we're not actually looking for praise although that's always really nice and always really welcome so if you do receive it please accept it don't don't get fear don't let fear get in the way accept the praise the compliment but really what the mystic is is that it listens it listens and it watches right as a butterfly we have now been open we're now exposed we've put our dream out there and we're kind of like feeling a little exposed to it right um 
But the mystic is that moment where we start to listen to feedback. And it's feedback, negative or positive. It's criticism, which is good, but it's constructive. So the mystic really here is talking about listening to other people, listening to feedback as constructive feedback. And also, <clears throat> the mystic listens to their own intuition. So if you find that your intuition is telling you to maybe go a certain way, take a moment to center yourself and listen to that. So for June, we have the bridge. The bridge is a beautiful one, and I love how beautiful this big rainbow is. It's a rainbow bridge. And now this bridge is connecting everything. You know, this is like, you know, three bridges. So this, this bridge is kind of going from all over the place, which tells me that it's going from idea to reality, that it's bridging our mind and our hearts. And it's also bridging us with other people. Because these ideas for us, they don't feel personal. They start out as personal, of course, I think. But the ideas that for the collective that I'm really picking up here is that these projects are for the collective. So really, we want to create that bridge between me and you, right? Between each other, between private and public. I'm not saying that you need to put your private stuff out there. That's not what I mean. By private, I mean that, you know, that, that idea, that project was private to you because it's only yours and then maybe you wrote it down, but it's in a notebook somewhere in your room. It's not out in the world. That's what I mean. Okay, so for July. Ah. <laughs> All right. We got, in this deck, one, one of the major arcana. It's not a tarot deck, but it's one of the major arcana. what they call it. It's Gnosis. And Gnosis is knowledge. Gnosis is knowledge because as this bird here has done a once around, kind of like a once around the world, travel for some of us. That's awesome. But it's done a once around the world, which what I, what I mean by that is as we put this project, we're on the seventh month now. So as we put this project forward and in seven months, a lot of people are going to see it. We have gotten the feedback. We've seen what it's how people are perceiving it. We've seen how we want to to put out there. So we've seen kind of it, it all. We've, we're doing it 360. Now we come back around with knowledge, with gnosis. Which this knowledge can only, again, it's now, it's feedback from the universe and from your own intuition. It's constructive knowledge to see if you, once we do this once around the cycle coming to completion, if you want to start again, and if what you did works, then uh, do the same, but more refined. And what you found that doesn't work, we move on, right? Okay, so for August, we have the orphan. This kind of feels like a sad moment a little bit. <laughs> because the orphan feels like abandonment. Right? Unfortunately, it can be abandonment. But it can also be strengthening when we take some time to be alone or when we feel alone, right? When we feel very alone. Um, for the orphan, feeling alone can be, you know, as a lot of these, they can be destructive. Because we can feel abandoned, we can feel lonely, we can feel, you know, we can get to a point here where we're like, wait, you know, I finished a new cycle that was pretty awesome, and now this new cycle doesn't feel so good anymore. Um, but listen, again, listening to intuition is always really important. But it, this is not a moment of abandonment, even though we may perceive it that way, even though we may feel like we are lonely, you may, even though it feels like we're abandoned, we're really not. It's really sometimes spirit, God, the universe. They leave us to see if how much we've learned we can do on our own. 
If you've ever learned how to ride a bike, you know that the parent, right, mother or father, they're or your guardian, they're holding kind of like the back of the bike, and as you're pedaling, they're holding it, keeping helping you keep balance. Eventually, they let go, and if you fall, you fall. But guess what? You fall and you get you get back up again. Why? Because you trust your parent. In this metaphorical bike, if you fall, you get back up. Why? Because you trust your divine parent. So when the hand, when the divine hand is let go of your bike, <laughs> your bike being your project or your life, don't be afraid. Because you can keep biking away on your own. Because now you have the strength, you have the power, and you have the knowledge to go on your own. You have gnosis, the knowledge. Gnosis, I believe, is a knowledge in Greek. So you have the gnosis to go at it on your own. And its spirit is never abandoning you. They're, it's always around. But they sometimes they step back to go, I want to see if you got it on your own. And if you don't, guess what? You get back on that metaphorical bike because you trust the universe. And eventually you learn. All right, so for September, this one wants to come through. The crone. The crone is interesting because the crone, if you guys know, in Wicca mostly, but really in a lot of different um, philosophies, you have the maiden, the mother, and the crone. It's a uh, divine feminine trilogy. Trinity, excuse me. <laughs> Trinity. And the crone is the wise one. The crone is, you know, the woman has been a maiden. Now she has been a mother. And now she is the crone. So after we've gone through all of this, and I, I'm getting these two, because one, I'm not going to fit eight cards in my hand. <laughs> but these are big cards. But... These two kind of summarize everything we've done throughout the year. So now that we've gone through this, we've gone through the cycle that works, and we've gone through a period of, of feeling, like we're, feeling like we're abandoned. Now we've gotten wiser. Because why? We've, we've biked on our own, or we've fallen. And now we know why we've fallen. So now we've become the crone. We can keep going on our own, and we can also teach others. The crone is a teacher as well. All right, guys. I hope you guys are still with me. I know it's a bit of a long reading. Um, and if you're doing your own reading, you know, I'd love to know if these, of course, not the same deck. If you have the same deck, it's awesome. But I'd love to know if, if um, it's relating to you in any way. And uh, if you do a reading on your own, if uh, you got some of the similar some similar messages, all right. So now we got to the month of October of twenty twenty. We're getting way ahead here, and we have the card of Anima Mundi. This is the animal world, and actually, for this one, I'm going to read what the book says. Because to be very honest with you, I am still not super familiar with this deck. So the first line says, Anima Mundi optimizes the principle, accept all, reject none. Simply put, it is the living soul of the world in all its multifaceted, multidimensional layers bonded together by loving cosmic forces. Diversity celebrated, multiplicity is honored, and nothing is denied. Nothing is denied embrace. So I love this because it, again, it actually, Anima Mundi summarizes pretty much what we've talked about in the whole thing is that it, it summarizes the Gnosis, the knowledge card, with the orphan and the crone. Now we're diversifying, right? Because when we follow a plan, at least for me, I follow it kind of like to the letter because I'm afraid to deviate, to diversify. 
But now we're not. Now we've ridden the bike and now we can do tricks on it. That's really what this card is saying is we've le- we've mastered the art of riding a bike. <laughs> and now we can do tricks on it. Now we can have more fun with it. So of course, I'm sure you guys are with me still where the bike metaphor it's this these projects we're willing to put to put out into the world once we've kind of done the first cycle and kind of gone around we're like oh now i know what to do and now i know all the obstacles and i see them much more clearly giving us that crone knowledge that gnosis and how we can teach others and pass it on and not only that but to diversify our own portfolio to diversify our own um, array of tricks we can do, right? So that's what the Enema Mundi is saying. All right. So now we're entering November. And we have the card of the cave. The cave, actually, this feels like, it doesn't feel like seclusion. Even though for, for some of us, I think because we've been so busy during the year, now the cave feels like a haven. It feels like we kind of want to shut off a little bit from the world. We want to just kind of be alone for a while. Um, also, what I'm getting out of the cave with this, there are two eyes here in the middle and the light, which this light feels very much like the crown chakra because it's kind of where it's placed. And the cave feels like a moment of silence after everything here after a lot of action we've learned a lot we've done so many things now we just want to chill (laughs) now we just want some silence some peace for the mind and honestly welcome it welcome it you know because it's much needed definitely uh, much needed to restore our spirit to restore our soul and to restore our minds absolutely and our bodies as well So now we've come to December and we have the mirror. Um, I gotta say, guys, just a side note here. This art, um, this oracle, the art is absolutely gorgeous. It's simple, simplistic, but yet really beautiful and powerful, I think. Anyway, (laughs) but I digress. The mirror is, of course, a reflection. But I actually really see, because it's towards the end of the year, We have accomplished a lot. This Enema Mundi card, because there's so many circles here and there is a star, a five-pointed star, and there are all these things on it, right? There are like so many things on it, crystals, shapes, you know, a Buddha in the middle and like symbols and a lot of things. So it feels like, again, we finished a cycle and we've done a lot. We've accomplished a lot in this cycle. We have gathered a lot of information. We've put out a lot of information. We've done a lot of things. We've completed the, what I'm trying to say is we completed the project, right? Or what it is that we wanted to do in 2020. November, December now feel like we're going inward and we're taking a moment and the mirror is reflective. So we're taking, we're going into the cave. We're going into the cave with our mirror and we are taking a moment to self-reflect. To, refl- to reflect on what we've done, to reflect on who we are and how we've changed and how we've grown. And to also start a new cycle for maybe 2021, you know, or a new cycle of ideas that we have. But it's just taking that moment to ourselves. And honestly, after this year, after 2020, it feels much, much deserved. And also, we much needed. We it's okay to put so much stuff out there, but also we can't fill from an empty cup. We can't give from an empty cup. We need to take time to replenish. Okay, so we're almost done, guys. So thank you so much for sticking with me. I know it's a bit of a longer video, but I just you know take your time to watch this video too. You don't have to do the whole thing. Um, you can watch it in parts. So I'm going to just pull four cards from this one for pretty much each quarter of the of the year. Because like I said, this deck kind of talks about broader um, broader ideas. Okay. First one. First one. Very cool, actually. Very cool. 
First one is Shiva in reverse. This deck is really in reverse. If you know anything about Shiva or the Hindu deities, Shiva is, Shiva is known as the destroyer. And we got the destroyer in the first quarter. The first quarter is the vow, the animal, and the destroyer. So very cool that we got two destroyer cards. Now Shiva in reverse to me, it just, honestly, it just speaks of um, what I said, what I exactly what I said, destroying the fear. It, fe it feels like that. It feels like destroying the fear. If he was upright, you know, as the first yogi, as the dancer deity, I'd say it's more kind of like creation dance. But he's coming in on the reverse, which to me tells me it's more of a destroyer energy. And because it's reversed, it's inner, inward. <laughs> so it's destroyer of fear, destroyer of doubt, destroyer of anything inward that's really not serving us. So for the second quarter, we have the cards of the flame, the mystic, and the bridge. And we have bhakti. Bhakti means devotion in Sanskrit, I believe. Um, so to me, actually it makes a lot of sense because after the destroyer, right? It, when we talked about the destroyer and Shiva in this case now, is we're, we're, we're going to go inward a little bit and be like, why am I afraid, right? And we have to conquer that fear. Bhakti as devotion. And it's not, I'm not talking about, you know, you have, now you're devoted to Shiva. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is that as devotion to yourself, devotion to your project, because now with the flame, we have that flame reignited, right? The mystic, we have listening to our intuition and get and listening from the feedback and the constructive criticism that, that's going on around you and around this project. Next one is the bridge. Only through devotion right only through that constant um showing up for the project is how we connect and how we build bridges how we connect with each other and how we listen right and how we keep that flame going as well so for the third quarter we have oh okay we have gnosis we have the orphan and we have the crown now this is the harana and I'm going to read from the book because I'll be very honest with you. I don't know what that means. <laughs> but let's find out. Give me one second, guys. Okay, page 73. We got it upright. See, it says upright in reverse. That's pretty cool, actually. It is time to focus your mind on one goal. To undergo the transformation that comes from concentration. Ooh, nice. Yeah, absolute transformation. Because like I said, and that's why it didn't quite make sense to me in the beginning. As you guys saw me, I was like, wait, why, why are we getting the orphan? That's such a, a drastic shift from gnosis to now the orphan feeling abandoned to then, to then transforming into the crone, the wise teacher. So harana, the harana. It is time to focus your mind on one goal to undergo the transformation that comes from concentration. The birthing process of an idea takes deep commitment to usher it to life. Again, we're back to bhakti, we're back to commitment, devotion. Through single focused commitment, you will be able to deepen your understanding of your goal and from its core, bring it to fruition. Deepen your understanding, that's the crown. This is your time to say no to everything that is not related to your dharma. Uh, practice dharana and focus on what it is you come, you came to this earth to do. I hope that made sense to you guys because to me it fully, fully summoned everything I said about these cards when we first got them. All right, and like I said, if you need to um, listen to it again, just rewind a little bit. Um, but honestly. To me, that was spot on on what we got for Gnosis, the Orphan, and the Crone as that transformation. And also being laser focused on the project, birthing the new, right? That's what the book said. <laughs> okay, so the last quarter, 
of 2020. Coming to an ending is Anima Mundi, The Cave in the Mirror. And we have Radha, but actually came out in reverse. And again, so sorry, but I will read the book. Because <laughs> a lot of these concepts are new to me. They're not so new. Because I, I do very much enjoy um, Hindu philosophy, absolutely. And Buddhist, and Buddhist philosophy as well. It's just they're not in a language that I'm familiar with. All right, guys, so sorry, but I did find it. <laughs> it took me a minute, um, but I found it. Page 103. And Radha is one of the deities, and it came up reversed. So it says, are you afraid to love? Question mark. There is deep vulnerability that comes with sacred union. When you've fallen in love, your entire heart exists in another body, out of your control. To experience this is to experience true enlightenment. Love is the most divine emotion one can experience. And to say no to love is to say no to yourself. Even the most broken heart can be mended again. Become complete within yourself while still holding space for that sacred lover who is waiting a reunion in this lifetime. Now, this is very love oriented. And honestly, I'm going to take this at face value for now and say what a beautiful message right because i know a lot of us we are looking for love we're looking for compassion we're looking for passion even in the new year but because we got a lot of message about these projects we're starting to create it's more about ideas we want to put into into fruition i will go back a little bit and reread certain parts that i thought were very interesting so Whenever you you get a, a, an oracle deck or a tarot deck, not the whole thing has to make sense to you because it's quite a it's quite a thick paragraph for me to go. This makes complete sense, <laughs> but it doesn't. It talked a lot about love, but there are moments here, there are sentences and words that really spoke to the messages we've gotten here. One, there is deep vulnerability that comes with sacred union. What I mean by what I mean, what I get here by sacred union is the putting out, right? The, the putting out of our project, and that requires vulnerability because it requires us to be honest, right? Again, it was something in the beginning. I said something that was from private to public, right? So, um, that project, that idea, that book, whatever, that has been kind of hidden in your notebook in your bedroom. Now it takes vulnerability to put it out there into the world for people to read. It's a part of you. So that's vulnerability. Um, and it says here, your, your entire heart exists in another body out of your control. That's out of your control when it's out there. It's somewhere else, right? It's no longer in you, but it's now Let's say if you want to write a book, just for argument's sake, the book is now outside of me. It's out there. The, uh, Sahara Rose, who wrote this book, I, you know, I'm taking liberty as the owner of the deck to take this message of love and distill it to make sense to what we're talking about here. But was that her initial intent? I'm not sure. But that's what I mean by being out of your control. It's out of her control now. Uh, of course, love is the most divine emotion one can experience, which is beautiful. And because we got the cards of the cave and the mirror, this sentence to me makes a lot of sense, which says, become complete within yourself while still holding space for the sacred. Um, so I'm going to kind of, I'm going to leave it there for this message because I love that to become complete within yourself. Um, to, but yet, yet leaving space for the sacred. So being vulnerable and allowing allowing things to unfold as they do. Um, allowing things to unfold as you've planned, but also to allow things to unfold as divine intervention wills it. So guys, um, thank you so much for bearing here with me. I really appreciate 
all of you that have stuck all the way to <laughs> all the way to the end. Um, and I really hope and I pray that this message serves you well, that it brought you, you know, I don't know, some sort of peace and also it lit the flame under your ass <laughs> to really start 2020 in in the best in the best light possible, in the best energy possible. So thank you guys so much. I cannot wait to see you in 2020. Much love out there.